Welcome. Today is the day to slow down. Make yourself a hot drink, cuddle up in a blanket and give yourself some grace. My name is Kat and I am a Scotland based adult third culture kid and I make videos about slow living, mental health and the art of homemaking. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about how to slow down and some of the regular slow living practices that I use in my own life. Now all of these tips are designed with a busy lifestyle in mind so they don't take that much extra time to implement just a dedication to making some small changes in the everyday. The first slow living tip is to reconnect with your senses. As you carry out your morning routine, drive to work or do everyday chores, draw your attention away from your busy thoughts and towards what you can feel or hear in the present moment. This is my go-to slow living tip for whenever I'm feeling anxious as I find that there's something about reconnecting to the physical world that really helps me to recenter my thoughts. The present moment isn't going anywhere so we might as well enjoy it. Feel the soft wool of your sweater, smell the aroma of that fresh cup of coffee, wonder at the detail on the leaves as they sway in the breeze. The beauty of this is that it doesn't take any extra time to do. All it takes is using your time differently. To wonder rather than to worry and to gaze rather than to glance. This matches with my second slow living practice which is to take quiet intervals throughout the day to breathe and reconnect. So many of us live our lives in a virtual haze and I personally find that when I'm constantly checking my social media, I feel dissatisfied, unfulfilled and disconnected by the end of the day. I tend to think of the brain like a sponge that soaks up information, so when I'm constantly checking social media, it's no wonder that my brain feels full of tension and feels really heavy by the end of the day. Taking quiet intervals where I choose not to check the internet or take in any extra information, for example when I eat a meal or wait in a queue, gives me the chance to reflect and wring out some of the stuff that's clogged up my mind. This in turn helps me slow down internally and feel calmer during the rest of the day. The next slow living tip is to take up a slow living hobby. Now I know that I said at the start of the video that these tips were not going to take any extra time and I meant that. However, there may be something about re-establishing priorities and working out ways to use time differently. For example, uh, switching out 15 minutes or half an hour of social media for 15 minutes or half an hour of reading. For myself, I found that when I wanted to read and paint more, I needed to reduce the time I spent on social media and Netflix. Due to the unfortunately addictive nature of social media, this definitely isn't an easy switch to make, but I can attest that it is an incredibly fulfilling one. To reduce social media consumption in favour of slow living hobbies, it can really help to visualise how you will feel after doing that thing you've always wanted to do versus scrolling mindlessly through Facebook. If 
you're looking for some slow living hobby inspiration then I definitely recommend that you check out my video on the subject uh, and if you want some tips on how to reduce social media I also totally recommend that you check out the YouTube channel Malama Life which has an incredible video all about social media reduction and the benefits of this. Now for my final slow living tip, which is to take a full 24 hours of rest once a week. This might sound a little bit extreme to some people, but it really does wonders for just clearing the mind and helping to calm the nervous system when you take a full day to step back away from work. And by taking a full day off, I don't mean spending the rest of the day catching up on laundry, going to a movie, all these things and social events and activities that yes are wonderful but are not necessarily going to give the reflective space and quiet and slow living <laughs> intentionality that would really make a big difference. Honestly, I think that day of rest is going to look a little different for everyone depending on what your interests are. For one person, a day spent cooking and spending time with family and friends leaves them feeling full up and well rested. For another person, this may leave them feeling exhausted. So in order to take a full day of rest, I would recommend sitting and writing a list of all the things that make you feel really well rested. All the things that fill you up and give you joy and leave you with boundless energy by the end of the day. If you are of a Jewish or Christian background, you are almost certainly very familiar with this concept. It is known as Sabbath or Shabbat and it literally means stop or rest and it's just a great opportunity to take a step back from the everyday mundane routine of life and to just really invest in the truly joy giving things. For people of faith, this day is most importantly a day to reconnect with God in reflection, prayer and worship. However, I believe that it is a practice that can be helpful for people of all faiths and none. For an idea of what an ideal Sabbath looks like for me, I'll spend the morning sleeping in, doing a peaceful yoga session, reading scripture and praying, then worshipping with my brothers and sisters. After a hearty lunch with loved ones, I might go for a walk in nature, then spend the afternoon reading or taking joy in some life-giving creative activities, such as baking or painting. This slow living practice not only reconnects me with the joy of God, my loved ones and myself, but it also helps me to be so much more productive throughout the rest of the week because I'm working from a place of abundance and rest rather than a place from lack and exhaustion. So for a summary of slow living practices to help with slowing down. First, reconnect with your senses. Second, take quiet intervals throughout the day. Third, switch out social media for a slow living hobby. And fourth, take a weekly day of rest. I personally have found these to be incredibly helpful in easing my anxiety and helping me to slow down and reconnect uh, with myself and with my loved ones. 
I hope that these slow living tips have been of benefit to you. If they have, do like the video and leave a comment below letting me know which tip you find most helpful or if there are any other slow living habits that you'd like to share. I would also really appreciate it if you subscribe for new content and until next time, it was lovely to have you here.